Last week, a friend of mine asked, what does the Bible have to say to us in a world gone mad? The answer, a lot. In this video, I want to look at what Jesus would say to you if he were sitting across from you at Starbucks. Hello everyone, thanks for watching. Bob Bodine has written a very helpful book entitled Two Chairs. He asked you to imagine what it would be like if you were sitting in one chair and Jesus was sitting across from you in the other, fielding any questions you might have. So we ask him, what do you have to say to me in a world gone mad? How would he answer? First, the world has always been mad. Go back and look at the first humans in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve. The world started to go wrong at the beginning and has continued ever since. And then they had two boys, Cain and Abel, and one killed the other in a jealous rage. Cain killed one-fourth of the human race. How about a while later when Noah lived? He was the only man of God on the whole earth. He had no one to fellowship with, and everyone thought he was a fool. Today's world is surely no crazier than Noah's world. And how about when the Son of God himself came to earth? He was crucified. How crazy is that? To crucify the best man who ever lived. For the past 2,000 years, history is the story of one catastrophe after another. So there is nothing particularly unusual about our own day. For many years, I taught a class on the two great wars in the 20th century, World War I and World War II. These are two of the greatest catastrophes of all time. The first killed about 10 million people, the second between 50 and 60 million. Now make no mistake, these wars were caused by forces that hated God and rejected Him. Still, God could have prevented them, but He didn't. Why? Well, a strange thing happened after the wars. In 1950, two-thirds of the world's Christians lived in what we call the First World, Europe and North America, basically. One-third lived in the rest of the world, what we call today the Third World. In 2000, the numbers, instead of two-thirds First World, one-third Third World, were reversed. Two-thirds of the world's Christians now lived in the Third World. Somehow emerging from the rubble of these terrible wars came one of the greatest expansions of the Christian faith in all history. Were the two events connected? Yes, I think they were. God took two horrible tragedies and turned them into astonishing blessing in the poorest regions of the world. God proved that he is working out everything after the counsel of his will. I think the third thing that Jesus would say is that he personally has a perfect plan for your life and will take you safely through this earthly journey into his eternal kingdom, where you will fulfill the reason for your existence, the eternal worship of Almighty God. In Matthew 10.30, Jesus tells you that God has every hair on your head numbered and that he deeply loves you. In Romans 8.28, he says that he will take every circumstance of your life and cause it to work out for good. In Jeremiah 29, 11, God says he has plans for you, not for evil, but to give you a future and a hope. If Jesus were sitting across from you, he would tell you to lift your eyes up out of this present world and your present circumstances and see him on his throne ruling the world and blessing you. The world has always been mad, but Jesus has always been in control. Thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button for more videos like this one. May God richly bless you.